good, y'all. You already know what I'm here to talk about. You see the title. Alexander Usyk defended his three belts last night against Daniel Dubois, WBA, excuse me, not to see, uh, IBF and WBO belts. Put him on the line, and hey, he got the knockout in the ninth round, and he knocked him down in the eighth round, but you already know what the controversy is. Let's be real. And it's the shot in the fifth round that sent Usyk to the canvas, and everybody's debating whether it was a low blow or whether it was a legal shot. And look, I'm going to put the screenshot right now so you guys can see it to my right or my left. I don't know where I'm going to put it at, but you guys see where it's at. We're going to just say right here. And you tell me if you think this is a low blow or not. Now, I've seen a lot of people going around the Internet, doing their rounds and whatnot, putting up screenshots. And, you know, they have their own opinions. But this is what I think. All right. When he throws that uppercut, you see Usyk trying to exit out on the angle. He throws it uppercut. It's not, to me, to me, it's not where it lands at. It's where, it's not where you see it in the screenshot. It's where it first lands at, not where it grazes up to. Okay? If you throw that uppercut, it's two different things. One is, where does it land at? Does it land on my star? Right here, or does it land farther up? And then two, what angle is the shot coming in on? Is it coming from downwards or is it starting from below the belt line and starting upwards? Those are the two factors to be considered here. So for me, it's not like he hit him in the, the ball sack, <laughs> but he hit him low enough where, you know, one, it's illegal, in my opinion. But not egregious, but two, it's going to have more effect on you than people are actually giving credit for. It's not something that you need a five minute long count for. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But if you've never been hit at the point where your thigh meets the hip right at the joint, then you don't really understand about contact sports health. We don't even have to talk about boxing. We can just talk about football. If you've ever been hit, with the crown of the helmet, right where your hip is at, where it joins um, to the thigh, right at that joint. If you've ever been hit there solid, it's not going to put you out for five minutes, but it's definitely going to make you take a little bit to, to recoup yourself. So I think Daniel Dubois, he, he threw a good punch. He had the right mindset. He threw the proper punch and slightly missed on his target. That's the way I view it. I don't view it as egregious. It wasn't premeditated. He wasn't trying to be a dirty fighter. Like, you know, I'm, I'm reading an article here off of ESPN.com here. And Dubois and his team, they're, they want to appeal this and they want to push for a rematch. He said, I didn't think it was a low blow and I've been cheated out of victory. And his promoter, Frank Warren, said, if it was a low blow, why didn't he take a point off Daniel? It was a hometown decision. How can you not order a rematch on the strength of that? We will appeal what went on here. Now, I just really want to hear you guys' feedback on what you think actually happened, where the punch landed, and what you think was warranted. That being said, Usyk was clearly the better fighter. Let's not get that mistaken here. Outside of that controversial punch, he was dominating the whole fight. That's why I didn't really look at it. I wasn't – nobody was going to buy it. And I didn't really even care enough to look at it for free. Well, not free, but for substantially less on ESPN Plus. Because I don't even know who Danny Dubois is, to be honest with you. You know, disrespect, but he's not really that high up on the rankings. When you think of the top heavyweights, you think of Usyk. You think of Tyson Fury. And then, say what you will, Deontay Wilder. I think outside of Tyson Fury, he's a competitive matchup for anybody in the damn division. And then you have Anthony Joshua, who just came off a very solid win. So you have a lot, Andy Ruiz, you have a lot of big players, Frank Martin, not Frank Martin, um, Frank Sanchez. So you have a lot of big players at heavyweight, Joe Joyce, who um, Dubois lost to by knockout. And we've seen how the jab that Usyk hit him with in the ninth round, it was a solid shot, but it wasn't anything that should put you down and stop you from getting back up. I think that Daniel Dubois checked out at a certain point, specifically 
in the seventh or eighth round, especially when he got knocked down in the eighth round. And then I think he just checked out. And in the ninth round, he just got hit with a shot he didn't see. And he didn't really see the sense in continuing on. That's just my perspective on it. So let me know what you guys think on that one. And then we'll see what Usyk does moving forward. You know, Furies came out and said a couple of things, but we'll see if he's actually going to make the fight with Usyk. Uh, that being said, let me know your comments and your thoughts on that. And then the other fight, I put up a post on this. Um, let me know what you think about this fight being made between Shakur Stevenson and Frank Martin. That's a nice fight coming up at 1.30. They, they're actually ordering this fight. The WBC is ordering this fight between Shakur Stevenson, the number two ranked lightweight versus the number four ranked lightweight, lightweight excuse me, Frank the Ghost Martin. Because Devin Haney, um, you know, obviously, he went up to 135. He got all four belts. He's undisputed there. And they're saying that, I forgot the exact term for what he's at at 130, but they're saying he's a, maybe a champion in limbo, whatever that. You get my point. So that is pretty much an open slot. So they're, whoever's there can challenge for the belt, and it's going to be these two guys, right? So obviously, many of you know Shakur Stevenson, Sharp. Young dude coming up trying to make his legacy. He's trying to win his third belt in his third weight class. So this is big for him. And then Frank Martin, he's an upcoming phenom. Can he beat Shakur Stevenson and derail his ascent to greatness while he's on his own ascent to greatness? So I find this fight very fascinating, actually. So, you know, Frank, Frank Martin, we know what he is, man. He's going to put you out. Under that stable of all those fighters with Derek James, you know, you have Earl Spence, you have um, the Charlo twins, you have Frank Stevenson, I mean, Frank Stevenson, Frank Martin, and then you have uh, Ryan Garcia. So he has quite a lot of fighters in that stable, and Frank Martin being one of them who is on the up and up. So this is going to be a very good matchup. So let me know what you guys think. And then more importantly, let me know if you want me to see, want to see me make a breakdown video like I did for the Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford fight, where I broke it down um, section by section, even down to the combinations that I thought would win or lose in the fight, which I was pretty damn accurate on. Let me know if you guys want to see me make another video like that. And, you know, that's what it is right now. Um, hope you guys are enjoying your weekend, having a fun Sunday night, staying safe, and hope you enjoyed the fights last night. Uh, I will be dropping more content, especially with the fight coming up with Charlo and Canelo. I, I never get the, the twins' names right. I just never do. Actually, you know what? I do have it right this time. E after A. E is the youngest brother, and that comes after A. So he was born after A. So Jermel Charlo facing off against Canelo Alvarez for um, – he's moving up two weight classes to 168 to try to take all four of Canelo's belts. This is going to be a very good matchup. So let me know what you guys think of that one. And then lastly, David Benavidez has a fight scheduled with Bubu Andre. So a lot of big action coming up on the way. And then who the hell knows, maybe we'll get Jamal Charlo versus Caleb Plant after the big back and forth they had. And I'm not even going to go into the details. You guys seen the video. You know what went down. And you, you know, it wouldn't wouldn't mind seeing a little little bit of fireworks flying in the ring between those guys. So let me know what you guys think, and um, I'll holler at you guys in the next video. Deuces.